Hi guys, it's the Power BI guy and today I have five efficiency tricks for your development process uh, when you're building reports. Now some of this I would consider best practice um, but they really do help with your efficiency so it's worth knowing what, what they are and hopefully you find this video useful. It's been a while since I've posted some content so I thought I'll start off with this, some tips and tricks that you can immediately incorporate into your development process. Now, if you, want to, if you have any questions, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn or drop a comment below. And if you can subscribe to the channel, I would appreciate that. If not, I hope this content helps anyway. So without further ado, let's start this lesson. So the first tip is finding columns in Power Query. Now, ideally, a good data model is... Um, it's uh, long, not wide, but you do get scenarios where you have quite a wide table and you're looking for those columns in Power Query. So how can we quickly find them without having to do the classic scroll where we're just looking for our column and we just can't find it? It's really easy. You just select choose columns and then go to column. And then from here, what you can do is just search your column. So if I search sales, you can select that and then it will immediately bring up the column. I didn't know this for a long time and I'm surprised how many devs don't actually know this. I had a scenario where we had, uh, we were checking, we were just doing data quality checks on I think 100 columns and just finding them there was a nightmare. <laughs> and this was earlier in my career and I didn't know about this feature and it was literally right there in my face. So choose columns, go to column and then you can search your column and quickly bring it up for whatever manipulation you need to do. So tip number three, this is by far, I think my favorite. Uh, I didn't know about this for a long time and it's how to batch change text within your measures. So let me just show what I mean by this. When you're doing DAX calculations, sometimes you have to make changes and then if you've got longer code, you have to change things individually. So for example, if I change the variable name here to underscore cells, these will all be incorrect and I would have to individually change every single one. We don't want to do that. We want to be efficient. So this is where uh, a shortcut comes in handy, where if we go to the beginning of the word, we want to batch change, we can hold Control, Shift, and then L. You can see that it's now found that word everywhere in that DAX. If I delete that now and do whatever change I do, we can see that it's changed the word. Very, very useful. Now, let me show another example. Now, this is going to be wrong in terms of syntax, but I'm just showcasing sort of an example of where this might be used. Um, let's say you had a calculation and you want to change the column. We don't want to look at discount or we might want to look at another table. So now I'll just put my uh, cursor where I want it to find the word, control shift and then L. So if I wanted to change the table, I could do that. But let's say we want to change the column. So control shift L and then I could change this to cells. And it's changed it here. Obviously the syntax is wrong, but it's a very, very useful trick for batch editing measures. I've had a lot of use cases for using this one. Um, I, I really, really like this one if I'm honest. So tip number four, this is all about DAX formatting. If you're not formatting your DAX or you need some help doing it, there's a really neat tool called DAX Formatter. So all you have to do, let me make myself smaller, is copy your DAX, then search daxformatter.com. Now this is by the guys over at sqlbi.com. Uh, sorry, by the whole. This is by the guys at sqlbi. If you've got search DAX Formatter, bring in your DAX format, and then copy. You can bring that back into your report for some perfectly syntax or formatted DAX. Very simple to use, really useful, especially when you're working in a collaborative environment and you wanna make it easier for your, your team to read your DAX, right? It's really annoying when everyone has everything in one line and it's not formatted properly. Format your DAX, guys, it's really useful, trust me. Or it would be appreciated. So tip number five, how to align your visuals. It's really annoying when you're trying to finish up your reports and align your visuals at the perfect spacing. Very simple way to do this. Uh, it's a bit fiddly, but it does the job. So what you would do is, let's say we had some card visuals. We would put the first and the last card where you want, or whatever visual, where you want the for it to start and end. And we'll just select those visuals. And if we go to, uh, I believe it's uh, format, align then if we want it to be horizontal distribute horizontally and we can see that now they're perfectly spaced and another example here is with our slices we want it to start uh, end here start here so what i'll do is just select those format and align uh, vertically 
and we can see that they've now been evenly spliced. That will save you a lot of headache, trust me. Um, really useful. Now, let's say you want to format, you can format the same cards. So this is a bonus tip. You can format the uh, card visuals at the same time and slices. So for example, if we select these because it's the same visual type, we can format this. So if I did effects, background, change to blue, for example, we've batch changed it. Very useful. Same, similar with our slices. We can uh, slice the settings, for example, change the font, the titles. Very, very useful and it'll save you a lot of time. So the next tip is all about organizing your measures. Now, I think the most important thing when it comes to measures before you do anything else is having a consistent naming convention. So measures are, they, they sort alphabetically. So we can see that our product measures, we prefix with product. Um, how you do that naming convention is up to you, but what I tend to do is what are we looking at and then the type of calculations. So we see grouping, then grouping percentage, but have a consistent naming convention so that they are organized and they stack alphabetically together. Now once you've done that, the first thing that you'd actually do is have a measures table. Very simple to create, but what they are essentially is a place that you can have your measures so they're not scattered around different tables. The way you would do that is very simply, you would just select enter data and then create a table, blank table. So I'm going to call this, uh, let me call it orders, orders, measures. And this will create a table. Right now, it's not a measures table, it's just a blank table. So what we need to do is create a measure in here. So we could create a new measure, but because I have some measures already, what, what you can do, if you have existing measures, you can select that and then move it from home table. So you select that and then I'm going to put that in orders. If I'm creating a new measure, what I'll do is select that table and then click new measure. But because we brought a measure into here now, what we can do is remove column one because we just want measures in here. If we did that before adding the measure, it will delete that table. But because we've now added the measure, we can see that this has now come to the top with our uh, other measure tables. Very, very simple to do. Now, the next point I'm going to, to well, what I'm going to show you next is how to create folders. Once again, this is very simple to do. So with this example in our measures table, we have one measure. So what we want to do to create a folder is go to the modeling view. And then if we select that measure, we want to go to the properties uh, window and then create a display folder. So if I call this other, we're going to see now that measure has moved into other. If I call this uh, test, it's going to create a new folder that is test. So we can see that we can create our folder or to move an existing measure to an existing folder, we'll just move it to the same name. So write the same name. We don't have to do this individually. So we can select uh, multiple. So if I hold shift click, if we follow the naming convention, they should be together. And if, if I change this from the other folder, so it'll delete that folder and move it to test. And now we can see it's all come to test. Now to create a subfolder is very, very, very similar, but uh, all we have to do is select the, uh, the measures that we want in a subfolder. And then we have the first folder name and we just put a backslash and then create the subfolder um, uh, name. So I'm gonna call this RMA. So now we're gonna see that we have a subfolder and we can carry on and create as many subfolders as we want with more backslashes. But that's the general principle of how you create folders. Very simple to do. So for example, let's do one more so I can show you. So quantity yesterday, it's in the quantity root folder. Let's say I wanted a previous day subfolder. So now we have a subfolder called previous day. And within RMA, I want a six month or a three month column. So what I'm gonna do is select these two measures which are 12 month and call this 12 uh, let's call this rma and then these two i'm going to create a subfolder called 12 month rma so that's a subfolder within the rma folder and then i want this to be three month rma now this might be too granular but we can see that we have our rma folder and within there we can see our splits between the different types of 12 month rolling average, three month rolling average measures. So you can be as fancy as you want or as organized as you want. I think there's a point of no return, but that's how you create folders and root folders. So hopefully this video was, was useful. Um, really simple tricks, but you pick these up over time and already you can probably see how they will help uh, as you mature with Power BI, as your data sets get bigger. Some of these are best practices. So without further ado, it's the Power BI guy and I'm checking out.